Well, hello there and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kristen and today I'm going to show you how to sew a project bag. Yes, my friends, today's the day. I have received quite a few requests from viewers like you asking me to do a video like this, so that's what we're gonna do. If you are looking for something larger or smaller, hopefully this tutorial will be a good starting point for you to play around with different fabrics and sizes and zippers to create the project bag that you are hoping to make. But this is the size that we're gonna be making today. It has finished measurements of 12 inches wide, nine inches tall, and and four inches deep. And I'm gonna show you how to sew a contrasting outer fabric. It has a zipper, so this is what it looks like on the inside. And you can have so much fun with lining as well. I mean, clearly I'm just using plain quilting cotton for my lining, but you can certainly use uh, coordinating fabric to go along with the outer fabric. I'm also gonna show you how to interface your project bag to give it some structure and help it stand up on its own. And of course, add an optional handle. And as you can see, I like to get fancy schmancy and add some hardware to my handles. And I'm gonna show you how to do all of that today, including, including boxing the bottom of your bag. So if that sounds like a fun time to you, let's get started. As for materials, here's what you're gonna need. You're going to need some main fabric. For this project, I'm using some quilting cotton scraps left over from a quilt that I made and some contrast fabric for the base of your bag. For this project, again, I'm using quilting fabric, but if you wanna make your bag a little extra or more durable, try using fabric like canvas, vinyl, or faux leather. They're a little more sturdy and can take a lot more wear and tear. You'll also need lining fabric. Here, I'm using a natural undyed quilting cotton once again, but feel free to use another fun coordinating contrast fabric. To give your bag some structure, you're also going to need some fusible interfacing, preferably one that's iron on. I like Pella fusible fleece 987F and again I will leave links down below in the description box where you can easily find these next you're gonna need a 13 inch all-purpose zipper I like these by YKK last but not least a lobster claw and a d-ring to add to your handle feel free to omit the handle you don't need one but if you want to make your project bag handy and portable and just easy to grab and go a handle is a great thing to add to your project bag all right once we have all of our materials gathered it's time to cut out our fabric so with your main fabric we're going to cut two 13 by 6.5 inch rectangles Next, with your contrast fabric, we're going to cut two 13 inch by 5.5 inch rectangles. For the lining, we're gonna cut two 13 by 11.5 rectangles. And then we're going to cut two pieces of interfacing the same size. Now we're gonna cut the fabric for the handle. So with your main fabric, cut one long 20 inch by three inch rectangle strip and one three inch by three inch square. Once we have all of our fabric cut out, it's time to get sewing. Just an FYI, I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance for all of my seams unless otherwise noted. To start, I like to sew my main and contrast fabrics together. With right sides facing, pin your main and contrast fabric in place along the longest side and sew. And just like quilting, I'll press that seam to the dark side. Then I like to add some top stitching and I'll do that about a quarter of an inch above the seam I just made. This step is totally optional, but I think it adds a nice finishing touch. Repeat this step with the remaining two contrasting outer fabric rectangles. After you're done assembling the outer fabric of your bag, the dimensions should be the same as your lining and interface rectangles, which is 13 inches by 11.5 inches. Now I like to start assembling the handle. We're gonna grab that long strip of fabric that we cut, the three inch by 20 inch rectangle, and we're going to fold that in half and give it a good press. And be careful with this part because it's easy to burn your fingers with the iron. Once it's cooled down, open the fold and then press both of the long edges toward the center crease. Wait for it to cool down again and then fold the pressed edges in half along the center crease and give it another press to create an even more narrow strip of fabric. Repeat this step with a three by three inch square. Now we're gonna take our lobster claw and slip it onto the longer strip like so. 
Then unfold the shorter ends of the fabric and with the right sides facing, sew them together. Be very careful not to twist your loop. I can't tell you how many times I've sewn this together and had to unpick. Now top stitch on either side of the handle about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Once your handle is top stitched, sew across creating another loop that is about one inch below the lobster claw. When you're done, snip away any extra threads and set these pieces aside for later. With the smaller strip, repeat the top stitching steps, sewing an eighth of an inch away from each edge. Now we're going to add our interfacing to the outer fabric of the bag. And typically, uh, if you're using fusible interfacing, uh, the bumpy side, the rough side of the interfacing is the side with the glue. And that is the side that you want to place face down on the wrong side of your outer fabric. So bumpy side on here, goes face down onto the wrong side of the outer fabric like so. And this side should be soft. So we're gonna flip this to the right side, layer together, and we're gonna take our iron starting from the center and gently in circular motions, work our way towards the edge of the fabric. I would avoid using steam for this part. Um, just a hot iron will do the trick. Um, and again, just, you know, using circular, motions for I would say about 10 seconds in each section and we're going to set this aside let that cool and repeat for the other side. I should mention that after I've applied the interfacing to the outer fabric and it cools this is the part where I like to add my label to the front again this step is completely optional but depending what kind of label you have now's a good time to think about where you might want to place it. And now we're ready to start making a zipper sandwich. Yep, you heard right, a zipper sandwich. <laughs> this is the part where we get to add our zipper to the bag. To do this, we're going to lay our outer fabric face up and place the zipper face down along the top edge of the outer fabric. Next, we're going to lay the top edge of the lining fabric on top of the zipper. Keep in mind that if you're using fabric with a print, you'll want to make sure the print is also facing down so the right sides of the outer fabric and lining are facing each other. Pin everything in place and let's take it to the sewing machine. For this step, I just use a regular sewing foot, but if you have a zipper foot, you can use that as well. I simply use my regular sewing foot and I have a feature on my machine where it shifts my needle over closer to where the zipper teeth are. I'm not gonna lie, sewing on a zipper to a project bag is not my favorite part of the process, but there is a trick to making this a little easier. Obviously, right now the zipper teeth are covered with fabric, but if you take your finger, you can feel the edge of your zipper teeth underneath the fabric. As you're sewing, you'll want your sewing machine foot to be butt up against that edge. And it helps to just keep your finger on that edge of the zipper as you're sewing along. Uh, of course, being very careful not to sew over your needle. Take things very slow and steady. As you come to the end, you might find that your zipper tab is getting in the way. Simply stop sewing for a second, lower your needle, raise your presser foot, and pull the tab out of the way, zip it back. and then lower your foot and continue sewing, and that should do the trick. Now it's time to attach the other side of the zipper to the remaining outer fabric. Lay the piece you've just sewn so that the right side of the fabric is facing up and the raw edge of the zipper is at the top. Now let's place the remaining outer fabric piece right side facing down, aligning the top raw edge along the top edge of the zipper. Layer these sections on top of the remaining lining piece, making sure all of your raw edges, once again, are aligned. Pin in place and let's repeat the sewing steps we did for the other side. Once you've attached the zipper, align your fabric so the lining and outer layers rest on opposite sides of the zipper. Then press the fabric outward, away from the zipper. Next, keeping the lining and outer fabric together, I like to add more top stitching, again, about a quarter inch away from the zipper. Grab the shortest handle piece and slide the D-ring onto it. Fold it in half and pin it to your desired spot on the outer fabric's right side. I prefer mine to go at the top, right below the top stitching line. Now, arrange your outer fabric with right sides facing, making sure those seams are aligned. It's a good idea to pin them in place to prevent them from shifting. 
Okay, this is important. Don't forget to unzip the zipper halfway. This will be handy when it's time to turn the bag right side out. Feel free to put a pin here also to keep things straight. Next, fold your lining so the right sides are facing each other. Now, starting from the bottom edge and leaving about a three inch gap, start pinning all around the bag's edge. Remember, check those seams for alignment. With the pins in place, it's back to the sewing machine. Start from the bottom edge of the lining opening and start sewing all around until you reach the other end of the opening. When you come to the zipper, slow down and slowly sew over the zipper. Going too fast can cause your needle to break and we certainly do not want that. I also like to reinforce the handle tab with a few back tack stitches. When you come to a corner, lower your sewing machine's needle, lift the foot and pivot. When you're done sewing all the way around and reach the bottom of the lining, remember to leave that three inch gap. Now it's time to box the bottom. Pinch all four bottom corners of your bag in half, one at a time, of course. Uh, though I should mention, making sure that the seams are aligned is a little tricky, but with a little patience, you can feel them lock in place, kind of like a puzzle. Uh, but then you can use a pin to hold them in place. Using a quilter ruler, align the edge of the folded corners with a 45 degree angle. If you don't have a ruler like this, you can certainly use a regular ruler. Just draw a parallel line two inches down from the tip. I should mention, the further away your line is from the tip, the wider and shorter your project bag will be, so feel free to experiment here. Once you have your corners marked, sew along all four lines. When you're done sewing all four corners, cut them off about a quarter inch away from the stitched lines. I totally forgot to film this, but now is also a good time to trim any loose threads, especially the zipper ends, to about a quarter inch to reduce any bulk. Carefully place your hand into the opening. If you used any pins to hold your zipper closed, be very careful feeling around for it and then remove it. Then pull your bag right side out. Make sure all of your seams are aligned and if you're happy, you can sew your lining seam closed. Simply fold the raw edges of the opening to the inside of the bag, pin in place, and stitch the opening closed at about an eighth of an inch from the edge and voila, you're done. Congratulations, you made a project bag. And that, my friends, is how I sew a project bag. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, let me know in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up, a like, subscribe, do all the things, you know the drill. <laughs> and if you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments down below as well, and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, my friends, thank you so much as always for hanging out with me. Have an amazing rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.